Hello and welcome back to another watercolour tutorial where I'm focusing on contrast of values. Values are the range of lights and darks in a painting, while high contrast emphasises the difference between those values. And it works really well with watercolour. They're going to bring a bit of depth, uh, drama, and hopefully a bit of visual impact to your artwork. Throughout this video, I'm going to delve into techniques, watercolour techniques like layering, wet on wet, dry brush marks, dry brushing to create those strong values and contrast in a watercolour painting. So the scene then is Constantine Bay in the UK uh, on the North Cornwall coast. And these are some steps leading down from a coastal path down to the beach at, at uh, Constantine Bay. And sun is right up there, top right corner, but creating some lovely contrast and some great shadows. Look how dark that area is there. In the little cracks, little crevices in the rocks, how dark that is there. And then contrasting with the, with the light on these different shapes and these different rock formations. For example, there, I mean, the, the rock here is a sort of slate rock. It's formed in lots of these thin layers and it's been eroded. Um, this being a, a pretty rough part of the coast in the winter, it takes a bit of battering from the Atlantic waves. So we get these jagged edges and lovely uh, faces uh, catching the sunlight there. So look how light that is. Back to the steps, light hitting the tops of the steps little bit of light down there on the left hand side and then down in the foreground again light the the rocks here are a little bit more eroded so we've got some round edges we've got a different different uh, types of edges here round edges sharp edges but again a little bit of light pebbles and stones on the ground yeah we're gonna have a bit of fun with contrast pushing the contrast here I'm gonna cover the whole painting process with you I'm going to start off with the drawing and I'll describe my materials at the beginning as well. Yeah, so the whole um, process for you from start to finish. And in the end, I'll give myself a little bit of a harsh critique, see how we got on. Uh, so let's get started. Paper I'm using is Saunders Woodford Cold Press, 300 grams. And it's 15 inches by 11 inches. I recommend good quality paper like Saunders. It's 100% cotton, very hard wearing, takes a lot of bat it, battering and um, yeah, good quality paper. And I'm just penciling in now the outline sketch of the main objects, first of all with those steps and where they're going to be. So not, not thinking about composition, not in the middle of the scene, just a little bit right of centre like my source photo and then just a few outlines of some major boulders and cracks in the rock not every when i when i do my drawing i don't i don't draw in every single detail that i see i think that would maybe detract from encouraging me to be painting in a loose style it might make me just a little bit tighter on the uh, on the the painting style so minimal, minimal lines there just to define those main, the main objects, the skyline with the tussocks of grass left and right of the, of the steps. And that pretty much is it on the drawing side. The brush I'm going to use now for a majority of this painting is a new brush which is a, i try and pronounce it right now, uh, I think it's an Italian, well, it is an Italian brush, Tintoretto, series 1407, Sintetico, Raggio, Kazan, if I pronounce that correctly. It's a synthetic uh, mop brush, quill mop brush, size 6, I think, this one. And, yeah, new brush, I'm, I'm, I can't stop buying new brushes and trying them out. And uh, that's very much um, the case for 
quill, mop brushes. I really, I really like, um, I aim for a brush that's got a good water, good paint holding capability and can create a nice edge and hopefully has a good point to it as well. This one certainly has got a good point. So I'll see how it performs over the next few paintings. So new brush for me. I started with the sky and fairly weak. Well, just basically pure water there on the right hand side. And then with a little bit of cobalt blue going over to the left, just dab in a little bit of blue there just to give a hint of some high altitude clouds, sort of fair weather, fair weather clouds, and uh, a little bit of a few dabs of cobalt blue just to strengthen up some of the sky there. And I've gone over, gone over the skyline a little bit. I might get a bit of a soft edge there, doesn't really matter. I do want a hard edge though with the tussocks of grass um, just there on the left of the steps. There's a few little blades of grass that are piercing the sky and they look quite, look quite attractive to me. So I think I'll just uh, try and create those very carefully using a flat edge of this brush. And you can see the way I'm holding it now, I'm trying to be holding it down close to the business end of the brush. And I can be a little bit more precise with those painting marks. Now, in this clump of grass, there are some little clumps of wild flowers. Not sure what they are, but little short, fairly short um, heads of uh, flowers, little clumps of dense, fo dense um, flowers, creating a little bit of light in, within that within that grass there. Now, just below the grass, I need to just start on that left hand side, start laying in the kind of foundation for the rocks, but preserve the little bits of the paper that I want to keep really bright. So that's that's the first tip I've got, if you like, as regards making an impact with a high range, a high uh, contrast in your painting is to make sure the lights are lighter and the darks are darker. So leave a little bit of the paper unpainted. That should show through. I'm not using, with Saunders, you can get high white paper. I'm not using high white. I suppose that would actually create even more of a contrast. Uh, I've got the slightly sort of off-white, um, which I, I call the normal, the standard Saunders paper, which I prefer. But it's still, it's still going to be quite bright. And if you slap a darker color, darker value against that lighter area, that's going to create the, the biggest impact. Just add a little bit of soft darkness to some of the shadier parts of the clump of grass at the top and the edges are a little bit hard where there's a lighter mound in front of it and then it gets a little bit softer as it goes up towards the sky so I'm just using my fingers because it has dried a little bit just using my fingers to coax things along a little bit just to merge it Sm well, it's smudging in a way and um, it, it works it works for me right continue on with the rocks and now just observing the scene just leaving out little patches of paper which will be those the faces of the rock that's facing the sun that's just catching the light Continue on down the left along the skyline. Now, as regards the colours I'm using, I'm using professional grade paints from Mark Jackman, Jackman's Art Materials, um, aka Mark Jackman. Uh, really good quality paints. And my palette here for the top, neutral tint, burnt umber, burnt sienna, there's burnt sienna, yellow ochre, 
spring green, which I use for the grass at the top, viridian green, cobalt green, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, Amazon crimson, uh, cadmium red, light red, cadmium orange, cadmium yellow. Going up against the steps, the left hand side of the steps. I'm mixing here a combination of the blues, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, a little bit of aloes and crimson. And where I want to go very dark, you know, exceptionally dark, that's where I would use neutral tint. Now, um, neutral tint is a bit like a charcoal grey and similar to Payne's Grey. Payne's Grey is a little bit, um, a little bit more blue in it, has a little bit more blue in it, uh, whereas neutral tint is more of a charcoal grey, if you like, and that does give you that instant darkness. You can't, um, you've got to be careful not to overdo it in a painting. It can become oppressively dark and grey, so you've got to kind of mix it right. There's quite quite a big uh, structure of rock where I'm painting now. And I will need to go over some of this area again with a darker colour just to get the the right value that I need. This may, as, as you, anyone that's in a watercolour will know, paint invariably dries a little bit lighter than it is and compared to when you apply it. So you've got to compensate by going in a bit darker on the first phase. But anyway, I can um, keep going and apply these layers on top. That's a nice bit of blue down there. Uh, add a bit of burnt sienna to it quickly. Sometimes I do mix colours on the paper Another little bit of light there, go a bit darker as I come down towards the bottom. Yeah, it will, it will go a little bit lighter. You'll see as it dries, it will go a tiny bit lighter. Now, as I'm coming across, I do need to leave little slithers of light, which will be the very lightest areas of the rock that's catching the light. Down the left hand side of the steps, that's where there's a sort of triangular shadow appearing there. And then just connect, connect in little places this brush is quite versatile. It qu often, quill mop brushes are like this, sh like this brush head shape. They're very adaptable. They're very flexible to different brush marks, and with a little bit of practice, you can you can almost do the whole painting with that one brush. They may not have the um, the rigidity of a synthetic brush. Well, you can you can get some cheaper synthetic brushes which will be a little less soft, but on the whole, you if you do want to apply a little bit of pressure, you might need a synthetic brush, but at the moment, I'm quite happy cracking on with this brush. And this slate rock here on this cliff face, it's got all these multiple layers. That's why I'm just using my brush to sort of follow the lie of the land, follow that layer, these, these almost horizontal layers. little bit of light above this area. A 
And then a little bit of darkness at the bottom, coming into a lighter area. We're at the bottom of the steps now and just connect a fairly large rock structure with the rock below it. Continue over just at that bottom of the steps. I'll leave the steps out of this stage. I could have actually done them first, but being left-handed, I just found it easier to start in the top left and work my way over to the right. Now in the bottom right corner, there's a succession of bigger bowlers with flat tops coming towards us just at a sort of slight angle, bottom left to top right, just a little bit of an angle, so not, not completely horizontal. And I am going to create the tops of these. So just going up to the edge there, that's the light now of the top of a, a boulder. The uh, bottom right one, connect with the bottom going over the tape just so that I don't leave any whitish area around the, the outside when I take my tape off. And then a few little horizontal slithers of light and take that over to the right hand side, a bit cooler on that right side. While the surface is still damp, I can go back into it. Now, just where, I, just where I'm painting now, it is a little bit drier. Do you see there's a harder edge there? Which is all right if that's what you want. Um, it w ideally, it would be a little bit damper in there, in there so that I can get a bit of a softer edge to it, but it's, it's sort of all right. I'm going back into that left-hand side and applying another layer on top and going a little bit darker of course maybe as regards I'm often asked about the ratio of water to paint generally as I'm progressing through the painting there will be less water so the paint is thicker more paint to to water ratio and that's going to help me get uh, a thicker application and prevent any, any nasty blooms or cauliflowers if I'm painting onto a damp surface going sort of wet in wet. But it's still a little bit damp there. You can see a bit of a shine on the paper, a bit of a, a glare against the lights I'm using. And as my brush now doesn't have an awful lot of paint on it, I can just, almost like a dry brush stroke, a dry brush mark, just scrape over the top of the surface and just deposit, just leave a little bit of paint, which could be, well, well I'm just trying to, trying to give a, an impression of the surface of the rock and the little, this slate rock, with the erosion, it sort of cracks and, breaks up into little tiny slithers of slate. So just want to try and give that impression by that dry brush mark. And it's it's made easier by using by using rough by using rough paper or roughish paper. This is cold press, so this is in the middle. Right hand side then, almost a mirror image of the left, starting with a grassy tussocks there at the top and the, the very top of the grass is catching a little bit of light and then there's a darker patch of grass that's more in the shade. Here's the start of the rocks 
below the grass. Again, like the left-hand side, I'm going up to the edge of the steps. While I've got this darker green color, that's ideal for that little bit of a shadow of the fence at the top. Fence I haven't put in yet, so I've added the shadow of the fence first. Just get that in. while I've got that colour. And now, I guess, relatively quickly, colour in that right-hand side. Now, at the top here, the light is streaming down. It's sort of quite... Um, quite sort of bright the light coming in and that then is a little bit lighter a soft sort of diffused light coming in from the top right corner but then get in harder edges as I come down to the steps and this is where probably the steps was was the most important thing to get right it's a sort of feature of the painting the steps leading us up to the top, leading us up to the light. And that's where I needed to get in that, particularly on the right-hand side. The left-hand side is almost vertical, but the right-hand side, you've got that kind of step pattern. So painting carefully up to those, as I'm doing now. Down, then across, down, then across, down, and then across to the bottom. Down and across. Darker here as well, because the... The steps are kind of above the, the rock face and the rock face just sort of creeps in behind the steps. So they're, they're, more, in, they're more in the shade. As I come down the uh, right hand side, there are some really dark, softer dark areas of the rock down into that bottom right corner. Cobalt blue. And then connect with that boulder or rock that's just at the bottom of the steps. That's got a lot of light against it. While that's still, while the surface is still down there, I can do a bit of wet in wet. So, as I said earlier, thicker, darker paint, and just applying it in there, getting a soft edge. It does help if the board, your painting surface, is on a little bit of an angle, and if the board tilts as well, you can move it in different directions or some people would just have the board loose and they just pick it up and move things around as they as they may want to um, mine's on a sort of i guess about 10 a, a, an angle of about 10 degrees something like that so it got a soft edge now uh, apply a little bit of darkness at the bottom there that will dry a little bit lighter looks pretty looks pretty severe now but it will it will go lighter A little bit of an edge to the steps on the left. A 
And we're ready now to paint in the steps with a little slice of light, a little slither of light on the top, just where the light is catching it. And the steps are narrow with perspective. The steps are narrow at the top. The, the, the height of them is less at the top. A little bit higher as I come down to the bottom. And after I mix, I want to make sure I've got that good edge to the brush, almost like, well, a, a small flat brush would be quite good for this, trying to get in those bands of horizontal color. So I'm sort of following the lines. Now, as I go over to the right, there's less light hitting the top of the steps on the right hand side with the shadow of the cliff on the right. So as I come down, I will have less light showing on the right hand side. Carefully following my lines, use my fingertips just to blend the paint a little bit. The, also the uh, colour, I'm varying the colour as I come down. I just added in a little bit of quinacridone gold just to see how that performs. Maybe a little bit too yellowy, goldy um, of a colour, but uh, I can blend that with a little bit of a blue and burnt sienna just to tone it down a bit. Almost halfway. Check the edge on my brush. Now, trying to get a little bit thicker with these bands and maybe just a little bit more light, especially on the left hand side. Yeah, the left hand side because of that shade coming in from the right. There we are, just close up that gap between the steps a little bit just to create that shadow. And Next step, connect with the shadow, connect with the rock face. And I think actually, compared with the actual scene, the lower steps, I think they're recently constructed so that they're quite, they're quite sort of <laughs> perfectly formed with a nice straight top. I've gone for more of a a bit of a bit more of a battered look like the rock face itself. Um, I guess they will in time get a little bit like that as the as rocks and shingle is thrust against them. Over the winter storms, inevitably they're going to uh, weather a little bit. Right, nearly there. And the the actual base of the steps just kind of sinks into the rock. I guess it's um, just a, a concrete slab that's been formed, built over the a main boulder at the bottom of the cliffs. I need to go a little bit, or go, quite a bit darker actually still on that left-hand side. So this is, this is almost Pass number three, layer number three on that left hand side. You don't want to overdo the layers in watercolor because if you do overdo it, and particularly with cheaper paint, it can look a little bit overworked and you get that muddy, that kind of muddy appearance. Um, you can get away with it with good quality, transparent watercolor paint. So I've got to be mindful and observant of that, add a bit more shadow to the 
bottom of that little little clump of wildflowers. So cobalt blue, ultra in blue, burnt sienna. Notice where I'm holding the brush now, so not so close to the brush head, more halfway up the, the handle, so I can be a little bit more loose with the brush marks, a little bit more expressive with the brush. And also, as you may know, I, I do stand when I paint, so very rarely will I sit down and that does help in, in being a little bit looser with your style. Applying these layers over the existing layers, and I need to make sure I still preserve those lights. I don't go over those light areas that I <laughs> that I was so keen to try and preserve. Don't want to destroy those. That would be a shame. So I've got to be very careful with my layers now. Going a bit darker um, up at the top. It is. It is a good bit darker there. About half, well, starting from the top, going down to about halfway. It is a lot darker. Maybe it's just more in the shade in there. There's a bit more of a recess in the gap between the, the rock face and the steps. A bit more of a shadow down on that left hand side need to be a bit careful not to overdo it that 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 is actually getting to a stage where i could overdo that shadow there just to the just the bottom left of the steps it might not show up too much right now and also there's a little bit of a glare from the studio lights but um, I, ca I can just tell it's with the consistency it, uh, I might just overdo it. Uh, this main boulder at the bottom of the steps got a nice little, nice little sort of vertical crack in it, which might be nice to sort of exploit. And then right at the bottom of the vertical crack, there's a little pebble that I'm noticing from my photo. So I'll just create a little bit of a bit of darkness around that pebble shape. In places, I, at the very end of the painting process, I might need to use a little bit of white gouache. Now, I know some people frown on this. I do try to use it sparingly, but I might need to use it here just to bring back a little bit of highlight to some of the top layers, the top uh, surface of the rocks that are just catching a little bit more of the light. Emphasize a few more layers over here, almost dry brush marks. Do you see? Just really taking advantage of the surface uh, texture of the, uh, of the paper, of the Saunders paper. And now down to bottom left corner. Again, quite dark down there. And going up, now going up here, there is a very dark, well there's two, there's two, diagonally there's two very dark crevices, cracks in the rock. So that's one. And then there's a bigger one to the right. So burnt sienna, burnt umber, neutral tint, ultramarine blue, harder edge on the right-hand side where it's up against the 
light, but then a little bit softer going over to the left. Not much water on the brush. Just drag the drag the brush over to get there at that kind of dry brush mark. And with less with less paint on the brush, I get a, a bit of a point on the brush, and that can be quite useful when there's some dark paint on there. Quite useful for creating the the darkness of smaller cracks. The all-important fence at the top, which is creating a little bit of a shadow across the top there. Well, it's probably, the, probably the shadow's coming from the rails just um, on the top left-hand side of the steps. Emphasize some of the steps just a little bit more. Some of the steps at the at the bottom of the step, it's a little bit darker up against the light of the step below it, the top, <laughs> the top part of the step. There we are, that, that sort of shows them up a little bit more. And use my fingers again just to lift off, lift off or merge the paint together. If it's not working, reach for a paper towel, paper tissue, while it's still damp. Hopefully the tissue has got a fairly flat surface so that I get, when I lift it off, um, I get like a, a bit of a, a more of a controlled lifting rather than showing, rather than showing the sort of dimpled surface of, a, of some of these paper towels. Right, thinner, thinner cracks then. Again, neutral tint, burnt amber, burnt sienna, a little bit of alloys and crimson. Two dry brush marks. I'm not actually sure what that is on that left-hand side. It's almost like a, a man-made reinforcement of the cliff face to me, maybe. Um, perhaps it was eroded there and it had to be strengthened with a little bit of concrete. Again, just a little bit more darkness to some of the foliage and the grass at the top there. Smooth it out if it's too harsh. Now there's not a lot of water on this brush now, so this is gonna be quite dry and gives a, gives a nice effect on the rough paper, ideal for a sort of rocky surface like this where you've got that flattish kind of feeling to the brush, flattish kind of profile to the brush. And you know, I'll just turn the brush 180 and just create a few quick brush marks there just to indicate the it's almost um, 45 degrees, the angle, some of the cracks on that right-hand side. I guess with perspective, it, it rises on that right-hand side. It kind of comes around over my right shoulder. Bit more of a contrast down there at the bottom of the steps, trying to, again, play on the light against the dark, so a lighter area against a, a very, a very much darker area. So the light, the light kind of concrete color of the steps against the darker shadow, the darker shadier part of the slate in that bottom, bottom right corner. Just with the point of the brush now, just creating a few little thinner lines here and there, emphasizing the rock. 
Now it's not perfect. You've got to, I think with a rock surface like this, you've got to observe it and just try and in your mind simplify it, all right, down to a basic shape. Just imagine it some kind of three-dimensional form and thinking where, if you place a, a brush mark somewhere, where is it going to create the biggest impact to create that sort of feeling of the rock without adding without adding in too many lines and um, colours in there. So just a little bit. Now, coming down to the bottom, I don't want to be too detailed down the bottom here. And then above... So halfway down the steps, the, the rocks just to the left of the halfway point, they, they're almost like little boulders in a way. There's lots of little tiny cracks going in different directions, almost like they were, almost like it's a, a man-made um, construction, really, out of little boulders. Neutral tint, Alison Crimson, Ultra in Blue. Pick them up in quick succession, no mixing, just really. I've got, I've got those three colours on the brush and just really then seeing what, what effect that, that gives you. As I was saying earlier, I might have gone a little bit too thick with the shadow on, the, just at the bottom of the steps, on the bottom left corner of the steps. So now trying to add in some darker crevices in there, it's just a little bit more difficult because I had too many layers in there already. Can't... Um, you can't overdo it with the number of layers in watercolour. There's, there's an optimum number. Not sure what that would be, but maybe no more than three or four, perhaps. And a bit more definition to that left-hand boulder with a bit of darkness behind it, creating a tiny edge there, hard edge. Dark to the left, light, light of the boulder to the right. A few more little horizontal cracks. bit more definition to that skyline, add a bit of darkness there too. Again, playing the contrast of the dark against the light. Ultra in blue, alloys and crimson. bit of darkness above that lighter face and again a bit more darkness there up to the grass down the steps trying to make the steps just a little bit more weathered with a few speckles of paint could do a bit of splattering at this stage that would help particularly down on the at the bottom of the steps, um, at the bottom of the boulders, where the you know the weathering and the cracks, they've they've kind of splintered the rock into little tiny 
little tiny fragments. Just to emphasize just a little bit more on the right hand side. You don't have to, if you're doing this yourself, you don't have to copy exactly the, the rocks as you see them in the photo. Just really study how they might look. And as you see little, maybe a lighter area in the rocks, where you could emphasize that a little bit more by going in a bit darker around the edge of that, of that lighter area, or vice versa, a darker area, maybe just make that a little bit more of a recess and... Uh, Emphasize it a little bit more to push it, push it back. I think it's that sky in the top left. It needs some seagulls in there. The the uh, whole coast, particularly the Cornish coast. There's there's lots of seabirds. So let's just have a few seabirds. Um, coming out from the, the top of the cliffs. Maybe it's quite a, so it's a bit of a continuation from the, from those little blades of grass. It's almost like a continuation of the, the, that form of this sort of explosion. Now I do need a little bit of light. So a rigger brush, this is a Lebenzen synthetic brush and more about this brush in the description, but you get really fine lines. I do need to just emphasize a few little bits of the rock that are catching the light where it might have been difficult to paint negatively around the, some of these lighter areas. So just to emphasize a tiny bit of that. Again, it's not, as I, as I was painting before, the consistency of, of the of water the, um, the ratio of water to pigment, not too much water. Don't want it, if I, if I had too much water with the white gouache, it would go sort of milky. And if there wasn't enough water, then it would be just too dry and I'd get a very broken, broken line, which you may want, but in this case, I do need um, a little bit more of a, a nice line to it. Although having said that, it's getting a bit pretty dry now. So these lines won't show up too much. So down, down the bottom right corner of my palette, I've got a white gouache. And then next to it, I've got a Naples yellow lemon, na 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 let's try and get this right, Naples lemon yellow uh, gouache, uh, which is really good for maybe doing meadow scenes where you need a bit of a blades of grass that are just lit against a darker background bit more light there on the top of the railings coming down, the fence coming down the steps. And that is pretty much it. I'll just now nip into doing a review of this for you, um, warts and all. So the finished painting then the steps leading down to the beach at Constantine Bay and trying to, the focus of this was trying to really take advantage of contrast, the, the range of contrast, the, the difference between the light areas and the dark areas with this rock face, particularly with the rock face, and pushing that, that, that those, those values, so the light, make the lights lighter, make the darks darker. I'm quite happy with the result. I didn't get in, um, if, you, if you count the steps, um, there are less steps here. Um, I don't think, it might have made it a little bit too busy, I think. That's my excuse anyway. It might have made it a little bit too busy, um, including all the steps. I've probably got about half the number of steps, but I've still got the feeling of, um, hopefully the feeling of, that little bit of a dip 
at the top of the cliffs and these steps coming down to the beach and the form of these slate um, boulders and rocks crumbling away from the cliff face, a little bit of the, the grass there at the top, just a zoom in there, grass there at the top, bit of light where there were some wildflowers, a little clump of wildflowers there um, early summer and then negatively painting around these lighter areas there where there's that kind of flat surface, that flat surface there, that flat surface there, um, the light on the top of the steps as well. I could wear this little pencil as I could actually rub those out, I could erase those out just to get a cleaner line in there, but um, haven't done that. I have added on just a little bit more white gouache with some of the lines. Can I can I show some to you like that edge there? Just to zoom in there. That edge there. All right. Small synthetic brush, little bit of white paint just quickly down there. That is in the sh that is pretty much in the shade there, but I'm just feeling that there could be a bit of reflected light bouncing against that wall and then just lighting up that that right hand side a little bit and a tiny bit more a uh, tiny bit more over on the left hand side again with a synthetic brush you can see just with those those marks set just a little bit of a mark to help help with the the light and then in, in the darkness just to the left of the steps there was just a little sort of continuation of light of the tops of some of the rocks smaller rocks where there were cracks and the, uh, the top area, just catching the light there. And also a range of colours. Um, quite happy with that. War cools, warms um, in those rocks. Quite a lot of, actually quite a lot of warm. Mine's a bit cooler than the actual photo. So mine's a little bit cooler. Uh, could have got a bit warmer with burnt sienna, something like that. A bit of yellow ochre maybe, just to, just to make them a little bit warmer in colour. Um, I did also emphasise that little boulder down there, bottom of the steps, so add a bit of white paint around that, a little tiny, well, a small boulder there, at the uh, just below that vertical crack. So I hope you like it, hope you like the demo, and um, looking forward to your comments. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, and I will catch up with you on the next watercolour tutorial coming to you soon, probably a completely different scene to this one. Thanks very much, bye-bye.